Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Australian Report for Monday, November the 21st. And starting with the ASX 200 here. Um, but first of all, I just want to say that uh, the US has Thanksgiving on Thursday and I think um, half of Friday doesn't trade as well. So the volume will be light going into, um, into that Wednesday for that Thursday holiday. And there's also some jobless figures and flash PMI figures coming out on Wednesday as well. So for the US, so that could get a bit spiky. With the Australian market here, what I'm trying to do without being too bearish or too bullish is really just to, um, I want that one there, but um, where are we here? Yeah, all I want to do is from wave four low here is go one, two, three, four, and five up here. Once we got that fifth wave, and I do, I do think banks and a lot of resource stocks will also have this particular pattern as well. I think they need to push up further, the banks and also, um, you know, BHP and Rio and the ones that we track. But once that tops in here, and that will also be significant for um, the S&P 500 as well. Um, so with the S&P 500, if I could just uh, go back, because I've been looking at it and and I think we'll just keep it in mind a little bit as well. So with the S&P here, in a nutshell, we've been looking for wave three and four, right? And then we've got wave one and two here, and then we'll have three and four and five here. Now, when we get to the top here, I don't know if we'll have wave one and we pull back for wave two to here or to here, and then we go up from that point, or we're going to have wave C here of wave two, and then we're gonna be working our way lower at that point. What we will have though is once these five waves, one, two, three, four, five here, and the same as the Australian market, what we will have left at the end of the day when this pulls down is we'll have that top which we can go along on and we can improve on that by going down to the second high. So we may be able to improve that as well. I'm sure we can. We could bring it down into this little area through here and we can do a few other things as well. But we've got to work out in this space if we're going to be bearish or we're going to be bullish um, across this level here. So that's how it's going to sort of play out a bit. And it'll be the same for here as well. So we can look at it, we can look at, I can look at it, you know, I, mean, I can look at this market as an A wave, a B wave and a C wave down here, and that's the end of it. And this is bullish. And if it is bullish, well then these five waves that we've been looking at here, then we'll see a retracement after that anyway, won't we? After five ways, we get an ABC pattern. And the 7,200 is significant because it's the old COVID highs. So really what's actually happening across here is this market is, if it is going to be bullish, is just trying to find support on this level here. Now it won't do it at this particular point because, well, it just won't because it'll need to finish off and pull back after those five waves anyway. But if it takes out this one over here, here, this second high over here, then we can be longer term bullish at that point. But otherwise, we'll also need to look at how we can um, become bearish at this point as well. So we'll be we'll need to work through that. But this will be the the junction point over here that we need to um, understand. So yeah, I mean, in the bigger picture over here at 7,200, the COVID high, um, this is try to find, you know, it came up here like the arrival and try to find support, couldn't do it. <coughs> Drop back down to test support at 6,500, the next medium level. And uh, we're looking here. Now what's going on here really is this is retesting this supply here. So this is, you know, this is the retest of that, of that you know, of that um, sellers there, the supply. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, we just, all we need to do is just be a little bit patient and just figure out um, as it unfolds, that we won't know in the first instance or the second or anything like that, but as it unfolds, we'll get to a point where will either it'll only be able to be bullish or it will be bearish at some point and then we'll you know then we can move from that point so 
that's really it. So we either got wave C coming down here for another leg. So all of this becomes from wherever it is up here, the A wave and A, B, C for the B wave up here and down for the C wave. And then we come up at that point. Or if we're lucky, we can go up here for wave one and pull back for wave two and then go up here further for that. So I don't know which one's going to happen, you know. Um, so I'm just keeping open-minded about it and just, you know, uh, working through the problem. And, you know, I know that chasing the banks up here or chasing the resources up here is not really not going to be very helpful because you can see here that we've got one, two, three, four, and we'll have five here. Um, so it's not not going to go too far from, you know, from this high here. We'll need to work out what we got. So that's it in a nutshell. I'll just cut straight through to the, say, the one hour chart and pick it up from where we were on Friday. So we're looking at this being a wave four on Friday, much the same as the uh, the S&P of that case and um, yeah so Friday we pushed up a, quite nicely a little bit not too much a bit like the uh, the S&P I have to say in a lot of the um, tech stocks we're starting to see five waves come down from this top here you know they didn't uh, some a lot of stocks didn't push up they sort of came down so those big tech stocks so those big tech stocks could be making their way down now they'll be sort of held up a little bit but once this tops out here makes a new high here then this is like you know we're likely to see it roll over so i'm just pointing out that i'm starting to see it in stocks like tesla amazon um, Apple's still to the upside. So we've got a little bit of a journey to the upside here to go. So look, um, uh, the targets up here could, you know, I mean, the length of wave one here and then the length of wave three here, we should get something the same as that. So we could get up to seven, three, but I would just be a little bit by Wednesday evening, I would be sort of locking things up a little bit, you know. I know we talked about um, on the 100 tick chart here, some trades, um, 100 ticks there. So uh, you may or may not be in them, um, but let's just go through this a little bit. So one of the things to understand, obviously the 72 is going to be a bit of a bit contentious but um what we, we should see we should see the market you know swing across here so if you wanted to hold on to that well then that's going to you know there'll be something like the, it'll be a bit wild um and the next important level is the there's two in here the the 30 here so the 72 30 that's actually the top of subgroup one of of um, 200 and then the next if you get support on this level then we'll go to the 250 and if we get support on the 250 well then we'll be up at the 280 to 300 at that point the next level's up there so it just depends if you want to sort of hang along here a little bit now the count on this here so I think we need to look at this as wave one to here and wave two to here. And then we can start wave three to the upside, two, three, and four and five. So let's we'll just get those into space, into bearing here. Let's just check in as I go. So let me just, now that I've said that there's going to be problems at, at number at the 200 here, um, you know, there will be, there'll be something going on here, but um, just trying to understand if this would be wave one and two here for this. This will probably make wave three and four across here like this and be a little bit messy, be overlapping. So just sort of be more patient than trying to get things right you know and then this wave three here and then this wave four will come back and play with that number there again as well and then it'll push up so yeah maybe the 7265 or something like that so that's all we're looking at really to finish this off 
Not a lot, um, but we'll see how it goes. Do we have a wave five there? No, we don't. So. So that's the top that we're looking for, and we'll just have to be a little bit patient um, after that. So if that's wave two, we can probably bring that stop up at um, I mean, I was just thinking this is one, two, three, four, five for one and two here, nice third wave here, and then the fourth wave, and then one, two, three, four, five. So it's all a little bit dodgy, but if that's true, then that low here shouldn't be breached at that point, and that's where the stop could go at this point. Um, I would, I would put it, he I would put it here on the proviso that this top gets taken out so this because this this here is supposed to retest this number this level the 150 here right um but we only know that's secure once that top gets taken out so once that top gets taken out then we can move it not only to here but you could also move it to here as well so just um i'll leave that floating here for a moment just in case um, but when that top here gets done then you can bring that that over to this point okay and then we can't move it again until this number here becomes the tested support and then what we'll have to do is we'll have to try to understand the wave count and you know so we can get a bit of a target for this wave five here because it might be at 42 7250 it might be at 7280 it might be at 7300 i don't know um like i say the banks need to go up the the resources need to go up and they need to find their tops as well so that's what we'll be looking at next with those guys so um, that said um, with CBA here it's a bit of a rickety old ride here but I think we still need to go up here and I was looking at the XXJ which is the banking sector it's also at 7200 here as well um, you know we're counting this up here with the same as because you know the banking sector is pretty much the same as the ASX 200 um, so I was considering I mean considering this is wave four here so I think the banks um, need to push up um, through here so what we could do is we could say that well I mean technically we need the banks to go above here so but they don't have to go far. They could just go to, what, 72. Then we've got 73 here. That's going to be a bit of a, a sticky one. And then 75. <coughs> so I don't think we've got a top in here yet. Because I can see this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. But then I've got this extra wave here. So it's probably the A wave here, the B wave here. And the C wave is 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. A bit dodgy on that too. But um, taking this top out here that would prove to us that the market needs to go higher. So this will be the same for all of the banks. In fact, this will be the same for um, the resource sector as well. But let's take a closer look at the resource sector. I won't go into all the banks today. Um, so the ASX BHP here, it is possible that we can look at this as being wave A and B and a C wave here, and that's the end of the correction. And now we're going into a bullish market. Now, if we're going into a bullish market, then we need to look at this as wave one here and an ABC for wave two. This is a bit, as a ABC for two here, it's a bit easier to understand, I think, if we look at the US ADR BHP. So with the US one here, we can see that this leg here is one leg, obviously, and this leg here is the other leg. And then we've got this. So this is all the same family here, right? So that's that would make all of this here this leg here all of this move back here the same family so um we can count it in different ways but an a wave a b wave and a c wave here because i've seen this sort of pattern before so um yeah but i don't know if it's wave one here or wave two here or wave a here and b here and wave c up here you know with the asx and counting five waves up here like we've been doing with the banks and the asx and that so i mean i think we still got another push to go to the upside but i want that to top out and then we'll have a look at the situation, you know, we'll look at, um, 
we'll look at uh, going long above here, we'll go long above here, and then that will take us into a big third wave up there. But do we get that or do we come back down here? You know, is this just an ABC correction? We come back. So this is the turning point. This is a tricky point here, you know. So there's nothing I can really, you know, I can't say to go long or go, go short. I can't do anything until it finishes off and then we start to look at this side and we start to look for trade setups and we'll be looking for trade setups on the long side and the short side and then in due course we'll get we'll get them you know and this move up let's put bhp back here it's the same for this bhp as well but the same for uh, rio here as well uh, we could look at this as an a and a b and a c wave up here or we could look at it more bullish but you can see how it's got overlapping wave structures in here so this is a wave four so we still need the push up here and it's not going to go far past 10 here it's, it's already sort of struggling at this point because it's consolidating here um, yes it can push higher and probably will um, didn't really look at um, the iron ore stocks here did we so yeah so basically with the iron ore Chinese iron ore here we're looking um, we're looking also looking for a top here and then a, a, a pullback here to see you know we don't know if we're going to come down from this point you know this can be an A wave a B wave and a C wave for an expanded flat for a wave four and then come down we don't know that yet you know um, or otherwise we've got five waves up and we'll look for the ABC and then go up again so we're still not with, with FMG here. I mean, it looks all bullish, everything looks all good. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, <laughs> we just got to be careful because, you know, normally you have wave two being simple and wave four being complex, right? But corrections are the same as well. So I can look at it as an A wave here, a B wave, and a C wave, but I could look at the A wave here and I could put the A wave here and the B wave here and the C wave up here for this B wave. So an A, B and C. So we go simple, complex, simple. You know, so once again, I won't know, I don't know until this is all finished off here. So the story hasn't really changed. Uh, we just need to uh, wait for things. It's a bit of a mixed economy out there at the moment in terms of the global players uh, dealing their own hands and things. Okay, so over to lithium. So this market, the lithium market, we've been tracking it on a one tick chart. This is a weekly chart here. Now, I thought it was just lithium, but it's lithium and battery, this one here, LIT, because it's looking quite bearish to me at the moment. And then I had a look at to see what constituents it had in here. And it's got some of them that we're following. This is a lithium stock here that we're following. We're also following this one here, which is out of Chile. So those two we're tracking. I haven't seen these other guys here, but obviously we know we know Samsung and Panasonic and stuff. But that, you know, they that take, they, I mean, Samsung, I mean, they're... Uh, you know i mean <laughs> you know they're into mobile phones and military you know so you know they don't really come so yeah the, even though so this one here this this lithium etf here it's more than just lithium so i'm thinking that this has got um this we need to look at this as more of a bearish picture coming back into below 50 to 40 area here for this one so let's just cruise into this one a little bit further here. So yeah, it's just got more of a bearish side to it, but I wouldn't take it on board as like the lithium stocks, you know, that's what I'm trying to say here with all of this as well. So I think we need to look at this as, as one and two here and this leg here uh, as one and two. Now copper's coming down as well uh, in, 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 in this, but I need to get a bit more of a grip on copper, but I think this can come down further. So um, just going into 100 ticks now for this. We're on one tick, but I won't go to one tick today, or we can do, but um, so this is here we're look, I'm looking I'm just going to view this as an ABC and then an ABC I know we can count this as one two three four here a bit of an overlap here but that's sort of okay and still it might be okay it might be you know we're looking at this being up for one and back for two it may be okay um, let's just go to one tick here 
I was just looking at the bearish side of it and try to understand it a bit more, but this is where we have been with it. And we've been with it with looking at this as wave two here and wave one up here. This move up here, as I mentioned, could be counted correctively or impulsively. Um, we had certain things to do along the way. The first step was to get support on 70, so that was good. The next thing was that we knew we were gonna get in trouble at the 50, 60% retracement level area there, which we did. But the speed in which it came off here is typical of a wave two and we could go an a wave a b wave and a c wave here for wave two um, but uh we also we won't i won't call anything in at the moment but it's possible now that this can be uh wave one and you know we'll, we'll look at just we'll wait for this to finish yeah um it looks like it's finishing now and it'll play out in this space here so what we will be doing is either be looking for long trades or short trades from this point of view here Okay, so that's just a bit of a, um, so we can look at this as wave two up here as well. So we're going to be looking at it in both ways, um, but I just wanted to bring in that, that bearish side to it. So that means that um, we should need to look at lithium stocks. So we need to go to this charting program. We need to go to the daily start off with and we're down here somewhere so the other lithium stock which is more lithium is um is acdc here this is our, our australian one so we can see that this is much more bullish here um so yeah so i think it's I think it's okay at this point. That was one, two, three, four, five. Let's just have a look at the weekly chart here for a moment to check on the volume for this. Yeah, it was down on lower volume last week, which is a good sign, you know. It doesn't stop it though being an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave here. Um, to get, we could have this as five waves. We could look at this as wave one here and two here, and then one and two and three and four and five here for all of a third wave. Not a very good third wave, of course. And then some sort of fourth to here or here, and then down here. So we need to be a little bit careful about this. We'll just see how it travels. We don't want it to come down too far. Um, and this is an ETF as well. I'm not sure what constituents it's got with it. I'll double, I'll check on that soon. Um, but um, it's, yeah, it looks quite, quite good. We've got five waves here, so we should get five waves over here with this. The move down here, we can kind of see the volume diminishing a little bit here on, on this. Still a bit, but, you know, it hasn't, it's slowed down over the last few days. So we'll keep a bit of an eye on that. We need to work out if that's wave one coming down. If the 90 becomes the retested resistance, then we're bearish at that point. Okay, so that the 90 is the line in the sand at that point. So just coming back to the ones that we normally look at, this is um, uh, the one from Chile that we look at and it looks quite bearish at this point it hasn't really given us a um a nice five wave structure up here so i'm thinking that this will be at least from here as one and two and three and four and five here before we start to see any upside here based on that three wave move here doesn't really give us a nice five wave structure down through here but um yeah i'll just stay with that for a while and this one here is also in that lit etf as well i won't do anything just here yet either because you know it's got a bullish trend behind it and it's just doing all the things that it should be doing at at a at a big number like this so it if it if it if it comes down, goes back and checks it and then makes a new low, uh, depending on how that new low is made and what angle it is and so on, then we'll make decisions about that. Uh, LAC here, I'm not particularly like this particular stock here. It was a little bit uh, difficult to um, 
to to read but it does have a nice sort of a b and c down here for this uh and then that five wave structure up here for for one and probably an a bit see, a bit difficult to work this one out here so i wasn't that keen on it uh pll um i've got some of this myself um so I've, as you know i like the um i like the corrective pattern uh here for all of this and um and i like this corrective pattern that's why i bought it based on this particular pattern here so i'm just going to chill and wait and see on this one here and and um uh, we'll pick that up when we're ready um let's see this one here um we'll just keep we're just going to keep an eye on all of them so at this stage here we've had um wave three and four and then one and two and this will be one and two here as well so it's in its box we'll just keep a bit of an eye on it it's coming down on lower volume so that's good um ltr was down a little bit but look um you know as far as a classic trading levels pattern goes here we've got one two three four five so we can expect it to you know after five ways we should expect it to come back to the 50 60 percent so that's in in this area here and this makes good support here and this makes great support here so you'd only get out of this trade if this area here became the retested resistance okay so we'd talk about that more when it gets down here but otherwise we'll stay bullish with it uh pls so this is starting to me this is starting to look a little bit what i'd more i'd expect at a, at a at a number like this and the trend of this degree here this size here um you know we need a pattern over here that's going to basically help rebalance that to a point you know at least 40 percent you know in terms of time and everything else with it and distance and amplitude and so on um okay well i'll leave those guys and um we'll move on to uh us spot gold so with us spot gold uh we've been looking at it as wave three here with an a wave a b wave and a c wave up here for wave four coming into the 1800 here so it's very much like the this is 38.2 percent so it's very much like the s p 500 actually we still need that uh, wave five here now we've got it as wave four okay and uh that's all good so then we'll come down for one go back for two here and then come down for three at that point at the same time we don't want to stick our head in the sand and ignore everything once that tops in place we can use that for a long trade and then when we get this second top in play we can use that for a long trade because if i've got this wrong in some particular way and this is going this way <clears throat> then we'll need to be on it okay it's as simple as that so uh we'll just allow it to um do its thing but yeah it's not quite finished up here yet so if we get a classic trading levels pattern here we'll be looking at the long side okay let's we'll take that away um can leave all of that that's all good and this will be the same for stocks as well so with <clears throat> with this particular stock here we can look at it in terms of i mean i could just jam all this up here i could put this in here and put wave four here and put wave five in here and do that sort of thing but um we'll just wait for it to clear itself out properly first so we've been looking at it as an a wave a b wave one two and three and four we still haven't seen that push up here yet um we should see that when us gold starts to move up in the next session or so and uh once again if the 20 here becomes the support with a classic trading levels pattern well then we'll call a low in for gold and then we'll start looking on the long side So that's that so the us dollar index here we're looking at wave three here we've got our a wave in that's nice and the b wave is is good and then we're looking for the c wave here and excuse me it just really hasn't given me a nice um it's given me a nice third wave but i just don't know if i should put wave four five in here and finish it off here see this move here when we look at it counts down as one two three here a b c for four and down for five so i could look at it as wave one and put wave two right here there might be one more little high there but so that's possible to have wave two at that point you know i should be doing these one degree higher as well sorry about that i'm 
must have just used them because they were there. So, um, so do we have an ABC pattern here, or do we have something a little bit more complicated for this wave four? That's that's the question, you know. And this would be wave one here, and wave two on the other side. So yeah, I'm not sure about this. This is just, I don't need those. That's a bit small. So we'll just see how this goes. We'll see how this um, plays out here. Um, yeah. I mean, it can take us up to you know this is the way four here, and it's got taken us to that point, which is good. If it's going to give us a double top here, then it's going to take us up to 10.7 at that point. 107. So we'll just see. We'll see how this goes. I mean, the short trade here obviously is, is looking at this here. And a short trade at this junction here would give you a long trade. If that breaches here, that will give you a long trade on the Aussie, the pound and the euro and etc. And if that wave four is finished, then this wave four here is finished as well. So if you're going to go along here, I reckon that you would need that 67. Um, you'd want a little classic trading levels pattern on the 67. You'd have to ask yourself, is 67 the support? You see how, how it played out over here? It was a bit took a while didn't it um, it'll be a bit quicker this time because it'll be a one and two here and three and one and two so it'll be much quicker than this but ask yourself when you're there is that number support is it being tested you know is it a nice strong support so i'll just leave that at that we're still one wave short and this should move with the s p to the upside um look it may break down to the to the downside we need to put wave four over here that's why um, we wait for that this area here to become the support at this point. Kind of makes a nice one, two, three, four, five here for an A and a B and a C wave here. It's kind of there, so I'll leave it there. Um, but I can see that this, you know, it's a bit of pressure under this. But anyway, the long trade is on that number. Alrighty, I'll leave it at that. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Cheers.